All right, hi, welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren here. Happy Saturday to you. I decided to do a happy Saturday edition because I see protests going on. Everything's going on out there and a lot of things floating around social media as I'm kind of locked in. I'm kind of reading social media things and I see a lot of misinformation. I see a lot of confusion about the powers of the government versus the rights of the people and the Constitution never shuts down and, and this kind of thing. And the government's violating everybody's constitutional rights, left and right. So I decided to look into this a little bit more. Um, somebody posted a question that prompted me to actually uh, think about it and do some research. It was actually a very simple question. A, a woman was shut down and not able to run her restaurant. She was actually serving clients. This was in the state of Arizona. She was serving her clients and the cops came in and everybody said they're violating her constitutional rights. And, you know, and somebody asked the simple question, what rights are they infringing on? Just a very simple question. And I noticed on the post, everybody had kind of ignored the comment, but I was like, that's actually a good question. What right does protect you to open your restaurant, to run your business? What right covers that? And so I started doing some researching. It didn't come immediately to my mind. So without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard and let's go take a look at some of these concepts, okay? Um, again, this is not legal advice. This is general information. These are things to think about. If you had something you would like to add, something intelligent like a case law or something like that, uh, please don't pull out the ones from the 1800s. Sometimes those just get there. Like, if you're pulling out, as I say in law, if you're citing 1800 cases from 1800, there was only like 35 states on the flag at that point, 35 stars. So you're on shaky legal ground. Not to say it's impossible, but you like to try to cite things that are a little more modern, okay? So let's talk about some of these issues that have, are at play here. I've got, as usual, I've got my mind map. I've got my flow chart out here. So everybody, for you visual learners, I was a visual learner, and I realized um, that this is how I learned the best. It was just getting a snapshot, creating what's going on in my mind, and I never really kind of lose that structure in my mind. So... Uh, here's what we have. We have, let's just start here. Let me get out my trusty pen. Let's go purple. Let's go purple here, okay? Um, we're talking really about federalism here, okay? Now, if you d may have heard the term the federaliz federalism, the Federalist Papers, things like that. It was basically designing our government so that your states had their own power, but the Congress, the federal government... Out in Washington, D.C., they're the federal power. Here's your state power. We got 50 states and some territories, uh, but you got your federal, your state power here. This usually derives from what we call the 10th Amendment. All powers not given to Congress, not given to Congress in the federal constitution, what we call enumerated powers. Okay, the government has enumerated powers. It's some, something that this is all you can have. This is all you can do to the federal government. This is what people mean when they say limiting federal government. So the federal government has limited enumerated powers. Now, one of the big ones where it's kind of uh, gotten out of hand, people would argue, is the Commerce Clause. And that's the Commerce Clause. And this gives the federal government massive uh, power to regulate even things in interstate commerce if in the conglomerate, in the... In the uh, in the uh, what's the word in the congregation of it all if it affects interstate commerce so the commerce clause says anything that affects interstate commerce the federal government can regulate so this is big if you're a law student you go to constitutional law you'll learn all about the commerce clause you'll probably spend two weeks uh, reading how it started into just interstate commerce and how it's expanded into even little even little intra intrastate activities can be regulated as most of us i think nowadays know let's get this out of the way um so the congress with the house and the senate has your federal constitution enumerated rights the, the a broad granting of rights with the commerce clause and there's also various uh statutes laws treaties things like that now treaties are interesting and i'm going to talk about that in a second but treaties are generally assumed to be on par with federal law. Some courts say that's not the case. Some courts say, so it really, you have to do your research in your own jurisdiction to find out how this is going to apply. 
Um, this is not a simple yes or no, red light, green light. This is not, this is, this will require some digging if you're looking at bringing some type of case for a due process violation, a takings violation, taking your property, this, that, and the other. So, but I just want to give you the general. So you have this federal structure. You have the president over here. I put him, if you look in close, I got him there tweeting. I got him there tweeting, but, um, so <laughs> He's in there. So now what we have is we have these state of emergencies. Uh, the fe the uh, President Trump has issued a state of emergency, remember, on the whole nation. State of emergency. Every individual state, governors, are, are issuing their own um, emergency statements, okay? And, and by issuing these statements, um, it doesn't mean that they get any new rights. It doesn't mean that, aha, there's new rights that pop up for the government no it, it's not intended to work that way what it is possible though what is possible is that your rights this is you here i should put a mad face on a lot of people not happy right now so here's you you have all these rights you know these these your rights are in the bill of rights in the federal constitution and you all also have your state constitutions okay so your federal government has a constitution your states will have a constitution. Your states are free to give you more, more rights than the federal. They're free to give you more protections, more rights, okay? So, um, but, so you also want to check your state statute. So you're protected by the federal constitution, any rights you have in there, and also your state constitution. So when you're digging into a case, you're looking at everything, okay? The whole, the whole big enchilada here. Now, the Tenth Amendment is part of the federal constitution. It's part, Tenth Amendment, part of the federal constitution. And what that says is all, all rights not granted to here, and you might as well just draw an arrow there because interstate commerce is one of the big things. All rights not granted are reserved to the states, okay? To the states. Now, this is an important uh, right of all states. This is your Governor Newsom, okay? This is Governor Ducey in Arizona, for examples. And they have what's called police powers. And this is broad powers to protect the health, safety, welfare of their citizens. So um, you ask people when they get upset about their rights being impinged, they also have to realize that the governments have a duty to protect and preserve property and life and everything else. So they, you know, if they weren't doing anything, we would say, why doesn't the government do anything? So there are, they are going to get involved. They are going to take measures, but they shouldn't be creating new rights, but it is possible. And we, we know there's a uh, case law that your, your rights are not absolute. For example, under the second amendment, your, your, your uh, right to bear arms, as they call it, you can't own a, uh, a tank and, you know, drive down the street in a tank, things like that. Um, again, don't quote me. I'm just saying you can't have an aircraft carry, things like that. There are limits. Uh, there are some limit. you know, they can put different. I'm not a Second Amendment expert by any measure. But First Amendment as well, they can put limits. They can say you got to go get a permit. you got to go time, place, and manner. You can only go march on this day. You can only uh, march in these places. So we see a lot of that going on right now. This is what a lot of people, I think the First Amendment is really what's driving people nuts right now. And that encompasses your right of free speech, uh, your right to peaceful assembly, and that's what people are wanting now. And you can see them doing it. And we have an interesting um, tension down in Orange County. Um, and we have an office down in Newport Beach. So down here, we have people protesting, wanting to go onto the beach. Um, it's not clear if going to the beach is actually a form of protest. Is that a protected free speech activity? Or are they making a statement? Yes, we will go to the beach. So uh, all this is going on right now. And so now Gavin Newsom is wanting to come down and basically, you know, block it off and not let people go down there. So um, things are really heating up, but people are saying, well, I got, what about my rights? And they say, well, we got to protect you. What about, what about my duty to protect you? So I think in a lot of these cases, what you, what you see is a balancing, okay? So in other words, if anybody wants to challenge these things, there are courts, there are courts that you can say that's unconstitutional. 
Um, there are courts where you can go try to get an injunction. You, if somebody is taking your property, you can try to take uh, just compensation. Okay, there are there is a thing known as a regulatory taking. That's under the Fifth Amendment right here. And some people are, are, are seem to be boiling up in this area as well. Due process, you're shutting down my business. Um, and may, maybe in some cases it is a... Uh, like a restaurant that has a liquor license. We hear this now where um, a governor will say, I'm going to take your liquor license. Okay, well, you know, or your real estate license. So you shut it down or take your license. You may have due process rights in your licensing. So, you know, due process is notice and an opportunity to be heard. So these are things that are at issue. Takings, eminent domain, okay. Again, if you, if you pass a law that basically eliminates all the value in a property, um, you could be required to pay just compensation. Now, however, we're in emergency times, remember? In emergency times. So governments are going to get more power. The courts are prob probably going to give them more leeway. The leaders, okay, your mayors, your governors, your president, okay, they're going to get more leeway in times of emergency. Now, I know people saw Trump and he said, my power is absolute. It's absolute. Um, and there is some case law that if Congress is on board with you, if you guys are working together and they're on board on the same page, then your, your, the height of your power actually goes even higher in times of emergency. And there's case law on that. Okay. Um, so what about the Ninth Amendment? Here's another one that's a kind of interesting one. I don't, think, I don't think most people have even heard of the Ninth Amendment, have you? I'm, I'm asserting my Ninth Amendment rights. What the heck is in the Ninth Amendment? Let me actually read it out of my trusty law book here for you. But the Ninth Amendment, again, is coming from your federal constitution. Check your state constitution if it has any other similar rights that you would want to assert. And that says, I'm reading out of here out of my, my Black's Law Dictionary. My old one, my old Black's Law Dictionary here. The Second Amendment, the Ninth Amendment to the United States Constitution provides that the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. 